Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra iPhone 13 Pro Max. The best phones Android and iOS users can buy today. Both are great phones and both are packed with new camera hardware and software. Now, while this isn't going to be a should you switch from iPhone to Android video, I'm pretty sure this is a camera shootout that you don't want to miss. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, your gadget matchmaker. This is the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra versus iPhone 13 Pro Max camera shootout. We're breaking the shootout down into five categories. Wide, ultra wide, telephoto, portraits, and video. Each category will be subdivided into daytime and low light. We're always using auto mode. And just to be fair, each time I will take at least two photos and pick the best one. Got it? All right, let's begin. Ultra wide cameras are all about being able to fit more into a frame, which can sometimes be tricky, especially if you're photographing something which is large and you're up close. For example, I'm right in front of a church and I want to be able to take a photo of the facade. One X, as you can see, is just too tight. But if I switch to ultra wide, boom, much better. Now, say you wanna capture a cityscape or landscape. Ultra wide is good for that too. Right, so on paper, both phones have ultra wide cameras with a 120 degree field of view, but the iPhone 13 Pro Max's camera is wider. To demonstrate this, I took a photo of Chai propping the phones on a Lamy Call phone stand. That way I can ensure that the photo was taken from the same exact spot. Notice on the iPhone's photo, you can see more of the scene. And if you're wondering why on the S22 Ultra, you can see more of Chai's keyboard, well, that's just because the ultra wide camera is positioned higher on the phone. During the day, both phones took great looking ultra wide angle photos, the right amount of punch and contrast. Here's a shot of another church in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. I've noticed the iPhone produces photos with bluer skies, but on a gloomy day, like on this day when I shot this photo of the amphitheater at the Little Island in Manhattan, things are pretty similar. Next, here's a shot of me from one of my favorite photo spots in all of New York. Again, I kind of like the iPhone's shot better with its bluer skies. I think overall, this photo is more color accurate, but really it could go either way. And that applies to these photos as well. I know you can't wait to see how the rest of this comparison turned out, and I promise we'll get back to that after this quick break. Now, whether you're thinking of getting the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra or the iPhone 13 Pro Max, one thing is for sure, protection is important regardless of which premium phone you choose. You might remember we featured Elago's unique accessories for the AirPods, MagSafe charger, and even the Apple Pencil. Well, great news is that they also have cases for the Samsung Galaxy S22 series. This one is made of silicone, one of my all-time favorites. I just love the grippy texture of a silicone case, especially when I'm using large phones. The S22 Ultra fits nice and snug, and this black color goes really well with the black S22 Ultra. Apart from black, the silicone case is also available in stone and sand pink and retails for $13.99 regardless of the S22 model you own. If you would rather show off your phone's color, they also make the hybrid case. It's a clear case made of a combination of polycarbonate and TPU with raised lips around the camera modules and the display for that extra protection. The hybrid case for the S22, S22 Plus, and S22 Ultra also retail for $13.99. If you want the best kind of protection for your new S22, there's also the Armor case. It has bumpers on all four corners and a nice carbon fiber pattern around all of its edges. The back also has a nice stripe texture for that extra grip. The raised lips around the cameras and the display are a little bit thicker too, but overall this case is still sleek. A great addition to your everyday carry essentials. The armor case retails for $60.99 for all S22 models. Now, if you're an iPhone user, Elago also makes tons of cases in different styles, regardless of whatever model you own, including this Pebble case for the iPhone 13 Pro Max. This case is made of a mix of TPU and real stone, giving it a good amount of protection and a unique texture. The Pebble case retails for $10.99. There's also the Glide case if you like the two-toned look. This one retails for $17.99. To check out all the cases I just showed you, visit elago.com. I'll also put links to each one in the description box below. 
On paper, both phones have 12 megapixel ultra wide angle cameras. The iPhone has a higher aperture, f1.8 versus f2.2, but the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra has a larger image sensor. In a perfect world, especially when it comes to shooting in low light situations like this one, you want both. In this shot of a cause statue in Greenpoint, notice the iPhone is able to fit more into the frame, but the S22 Ultra captures more details, especially in the soil up front and in the brick in the building's facade. This next shot is a makeshift igloo at Hanon in Williamsburg. The iPhone produces the brighter, albeit noisier photo, and that seems to be intentional. The iPhone favors a brighter photo to noise, while the S22 Ultra is mushier, but with more detail. That's evident even in this dimly lit photo of Chai at my apartment, indoors, but during the day. The S22 Ultra has the better photo overall, just zoom in on her face to see what I mean. Meanwhile, in this photo of me and my buddy Marcus, aka PC Centric, taken at a dimly lit restaurant, the S22 Ultra produced a sharper, less noisier photo. And I like how it retained the details in Marcus's sweater and the dark blue stripe on mine. After dinner, we spent some time at Barcade. Here, I like the iPhones better. Notice the S22 Ultra blew out some highlights in the brightest portion of the photo, that bright spot behind the machine, something it has the tendency to do. You'll see it again in this photo taken during intermission of Moulin Rouge on Broadway. Again, the S22 Ultra blew out the highlights. Also notice again how the iPhones shot is wider. In terms of extra features, the ultra wide angle camera on the iPhone 13 Pro Max has macro mode, which lets you get super close on subjects. For example, if I want to take a photo of this flower over here, this is how close I can get with the S22 Ultra, and this is how close I can get with the 13 Pro Max. Both are great shots, but there's definitely more magnification on the iPhone. Here's another shot I took of my HomePod mini. The S22 Ultra's photo is pretty cool and close up, but the iPhone 13 Pro Max can get in real close, so much so that you can see the fibers on the mesh fabric. The iPhone also lets you see more details of this penny or the midrib of this leaf. Next category is the wide camera, also referred to as the main camera. Before we look at samples, let's first check out the numbers for a bit. This year, both Samsung and Apple have given these cameras a hardware upgrade. The S22 Ultra has a 108 megapixel camera with an f1.8 aperture. Samsung combines these pixels in a process called pixel binning. So you effectively get a 12 megapixel image with a pixel size of 2.4 microns. While the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a 12 megapixel camera with an f1.5 lens and a pixel size of 1.9 microns. Both have OIS, but the iPhone has stabilization built directly onto its sensor. As is almost always the case, as you can see from these photos, both phones do an excellent job during the day. And your preferences or mine may differ from photo to photo. Some things I noticed though, Samsung's wide lens is wider, as can be seen in these next two photos. The iPhone also has better white balance and also produced punchier colors. You'll notice that here. See the rich orange on the mug? Or in the sky and the colorful mural on this building in Greenpoint. It's the same story as the sun begins to set. Notice it's brought out more colors in this sunset. In this late night photo of a flower, or even me sitting at the TKTS steps in Times Square. The S22 Ultra seems to wash out some of the color and contrast from the photos, perhaps in an attempt to balance out strong colors, like in this example, a beer garden with plenty of red and orange light. Notice the cocktail on the right looks like the Negroni that it is. The table also is orange, while in the S22 Ultra's photos, it resembles a rosé, the table too, a pinker shade. Sometimes though, that color correction works, like in this shot of a German pretzel. It's a different story though when night mode kicks in. It's almost as if color accuracy and clarity tip in favor of the S22 Ultra. Notice the bowl of ramen here looks more enticing with more warmth and punchier colors. Zoom in on that purple candle. Or in this shot of Manhattan from Dumbo. Apart from being more yellowish, the iPhone's photo is mushier. Notice less details in the water. 
To further reinforce this point, I took this photo in my bathroom with a selection of colored items. The only light was from a crack in the door. For how little light was available, I really shouldn't even be complaining. But notice on the S22 Ultra's photo, the white bottle is white. And even the grain on the table, more visible. So while the main camera on the iPhone 13 Pro Max does a better job during the day, night mode on the S22 Ultra is superior. Telephoto lenses are all about being able to get in closer on a subject. And these days, you're either going to get 2x, 3x, 5x, or 10x optical zoom. For example, the iPhone 13 Pro Max has 3x zoom, while the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra has 3x zoom, but also 10x zoom. I've talked about this in previous videos, but how much zoom you really need depends on what you're taking a photo of. For example, if I want to take a picture of that lovely prep truck over there, 3x zoom is more than enough. But if say you're traveling and want to photograph things far away, like in this example of a mural of who I think might be Tom Selleck, but let me know in the comments section if you know who he is. 10x zoom is definitely going to come in handy. Personally, I think 3x zoom is more than enough, but the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra wins this round with its ability to zoom in even further. From 10x optical, the S22 Ultra lets you go all the way up to 100x digital, which is for me unusable, but 30x is still pretty good. So for example, one evening I was at Brooklyn Bridge Park, these 10x and 30x photos of Lady Liberty are a definite winner. 30x is great too for being able to photograph the moon. Or what I like to do when I'm on my patio, which by the way is on the flight path, is to photograph planes as they fly by. 30x is great for that. And here are some of my favorite 30x shots from my plane watching, all shot on a Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra. That's pretty cool. Now this is my first time at Little Island. It's basically a man-made island that's uh, also a park. Okay, to test stabilization out, let's walk out these steps and see how bumpy the camera will get. So Chai is um, holding the two phones. I'm walking backward and we're climbing up the steps. There are three more steps. All right, how do I look? shaky? Is it smooth? Let me know in the comment section below. In this shootout, portrait mode gets its own category because on the S22 series, Samsung is promising better object detection, which should result in better cutouts when it comes to portrait photos. Of course, photo cutouts are one thing, the quality of bokeh is another. When you have a camera with a large sensor and a lens with a shallow depth of field, like an aperture of f1.8 for example, and you take a portrait, you'll get super creamy bokeh behind your subject. Because smartphones don't have space for large image sensors like this camera does, what it does instead when you use portrait mode is to use software to mimic this effect. But the challenge is how well a phone can cut out a person from the background so that it can blur the background. And most of the time when you have flyaway hair like Chai's, you'll get photos like this one taken using a Pixel 6 Pro, supposedly one of the best Android camera phones. On the S22 Ultra, Samsung claims it uses a new AI stereo depth map, which does two things. One, it helps prevent hair from blending into the background, a problem we identified earlier, and two, portrait mode for pets. So let's take a look at a few comparison shots featuring Chai. Here's the same image I showed you earlier, but taken on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Notice it did a better job than the Pixel, but zoom in over here and notice how the S22 Ultra did better separation on Chai's hair. Here's another. Look at Chai's flyaway hair. Even those strands were cut out properly from the S22's photo. Super accurate. 
One last thing, Samsung says their stereo depth map makes pet portrait photography possible. So I shot this photo comparison of Chancho the cat while I was visiting my friend Judy in Texas. It can do dogs too, so here's a photo of Otis the Corgi. If you own a pet and want to take portrait photos, I think the S22 Ultra is the way to go. And that was our iPhone 13 Pro Max versus Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra camera shootout. Which phone do you think did better in this head-to-head -head challenge? Let me know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we post new videos. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.